is Katana Fatigue setting in? Ghost of Tsushima, Sekiro, Like a Dragon, Ishin, Neo. Feels like every samurai story has been told, right? Well, not exactly. Rise of the Ronin serves up a fresh take on this brutal era. So here's why you won't want to pass up on this Ronin's wild ride through a changing Japan. Rise of the Ronin. It's basically feudal Japan's Game of Thrones, but with more katanas and less dragons. Although a trained badger wouldn't be totally out of the question. You play as a Ronin, a samurai who's basically unemployed thanks to the whole Lord getting overthrown thing. Now you gotta navigate a Japan that's more confused than I was that one time I tried to use chopsticks. Think grumpy old men in robes arguing over who's the real boss, foreigners showing up with their fancy ships and even fancier diseases, and rebellions popping up like weeds after a rainstorm. There's a whole lot to love about Rise of the Ronin. The narrative is a fresh take on the samurai formula, allowing you to choose a side between the rebellion and the shogunate. Your choices can affect the outcome of certain events, as well as benefit or damage various relationships. Early on, after defeating a particular boss, I had the choice to either let him live or kill him. I chose the former, being the benevolent ronin that I am, no, oh, it's true, I swear! Oh, thank you! I'll never forget this! Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll go- Funnily enough, later in the game he popped up again, and I was able to ally with him, and then call upon him for future missions. So yes, your actions actually do have consequences. We're under strict orders from Lord E to arrest anyone suspicious. Are you indeed? In that case, we're here for the same reason. Keep an eye out for any miscreants. The combat's been polished until it gleams like a samurai's freshly sharpened katana. Now, don't worry, it's not a full-on Souls-like experience, but it'll still put your reflexes to the test. We got the usual suspects, light and heavy attacks, blocks, parries, and even some ranged options for when you fancy a spot of arrow-based acupuncture. It's a well-worn formula, sure, but Rise of the Ronin throws in a few twists that are both clever and ridiculously fun. Their counter spark is basically a fancy parry on steroids. Not only does it swat away enemy swipes, but you can use it mid-combo to throw them off balance. Plus, you can deflect ranged attacks with it. And get this, some projectiles actually buff your weapon, like setting your katana on fire. Perfect for that extra oomph when turning your foes into crispy tempura. Speaking of combos, you can actually keep the smackdown going even when your stamina, or key as this game calls it, is running low. Just unleash a blade flash for a quick key refill and keep hacking away at your opponent like a possessed sushi chef. This is especially handy before using martial skills. Those bad boys will drain your key faster than a room full of sake guzzling sumo wrestlers. However, there is no denying that Team Ninja took some inspiration from past titles when designing the gameplay. The stances feel very reminiscent of Neo's in their operation and tactical benefits. And the grappling hook, that seems suspiciously like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice's influence. Mostly for getting around, but also for a bit of acrobatic combat spice. We even get a sprinkle of Assassin's Creed and Ghost of Tsushima with the whole sneak up and assassinate dudes from the tall grass routine. Although, come on guys, haven't these enemies heard of like, looking around? The open world is another massive win. There are side quests galore, challenging foes to test your metal, and even other wandering ronin to scrap with for new skills. You can even snap some truly breathtaking photos. Who knew 19th century Japan had such a thriving Instagram culture? The landscapes are gorgeous, they're not the most mind-blowing graphics you've ever seen. Still, pretty enough to make you want to pack your virtual bags and book a one-way trip to feudal Japan. While Rise of the Ronin isn't exactly crawling with flaws, there are a few things that made me want to throw a shuriken at my screen. The voice acting in particular was a bit of a lucky dip. You had some fantastic performances, but then others that made you wonder if they'd just pulled a random off the street and shoved a script in their hands. What? Who told you that? You're lying just to save your life. 
There's only one way to prove my innocence. The Black Marketeers were the real scene stealers, and not in a good way. Their voices were more like a bad anime dub than a hardened underworld figure. You expected them to be all gruff and menacing, but instead they sounded like they were hawking knockoff katanas at a flea market. Thanks for your patronage. Jesus! Jesus! Hachi! Jesus! Also, Rise of the Ronin can't seem to stop throwing loot at me. My inventory screen looks like a hoarder's dream or nightmare depending on your perspective. Every enemy I defeat coughs up enough gear to equip a small village. Do I really need 12 slightly different katanas that all do basically the same thing? It's decision paralysis by way of overly enthusiastic loot goblins. Overall, Rise of the Ronin offers a captivating adventure for those seeking a new take on feudal Japan. If you crave exhilarating swordplay, a rich open world to explore, and engaging combat mechanics that feel fresh, then Rise of the Ronin is a must play. Just be prepared to manage your inventory because the loot drops can get way too over the top.